Welcome back, everybody, to the Knowledge Broker Podcast for part two of our transparency talk. I'm Joshua Campbell, and joining me as always is Trish Rizwick. Oh, look at you. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, welcome back, everybody. <laughs> I mean, it's been a whole week. I hope uh, everyone at home has been doing all right. Yeah. It's been five minutes for us. So. Five minutes <laughs> feels like a week. No, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Longest five minutes of my life. Yes. Um, yes, but we are picking up our conversation of the new level of transparency. So last week, what we did was we talked a lot about uh, being transparent in the workplace and how that when you're transparent in the workplace, it can seep into what uh, your clients see. And so because of that, we're segueing right into transparency for your clients, for your consumers, whatever you want to call them. We're transitioning our transparency talk. Yes, we are transitioning our transparency talk. <laughs> T -t 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 -t. All right. Um, yeah. So anyway, uh, before we jump right in, I want to make sure that everybody notices that I'm drinking water out of my master's cup these days because not only am I a bit nasally because I said that last time, mm. but I also want to make sure that people know that I, I went to the master's because it is the greatest show on earth. People have told, yes, it is. Sorry, was Hugh Jackman there? It, no, well, then probably. It wasn't, it, wasn't, been, it wasn't the greatest show. If no one's ever been to the Masters, even if you're not a golf fan, it is the greatest show on earth. I promise you that. See, I actually went and saw Hugh Jackman this year, and I can safely say that was the greatest show on earth. Where did you see him? At the ACC. Huh. Not the Scotia Bank like, Arena. Creepily or? No, like I made, like I was, like if I look straight ahead, like a thousand miles away, that's where Hugh Jackman was. Ah, fair enough. Yeah. Oh, he was performing. What was he yeah, performing? Of course. Yeah, of show? Was, yeah, his old show. Oh, he he's, does his own music? Yeah. Comedy? Uh, it's a little bit of everything. He's a very musically talented person, so... I've heard that. He just kind of combines everything that he's done in the past into... What do they call that kind of a show? Where it has multiple things? It's. I think a his was the, the man, the music... Comedy as well? Something. Well, he's just kind of funny, so... Huh. It wasn't like he was doing stand-up comedy. Seems he's like just funny. Cool dude. He's Wolverine. He could yeah, do he, kept, want. he kept chirping Ryan Reynolds. It was pretty funny. Because ah. obviously, as a Canadian, oh. all Canadians know Ryan Reynolds. Ryan Reynolds is cool, though. He is a cool guy. Anyway, okay. we have digressed. All right. Josh, you have taken us down a digression rabbit hole. Okay. Anyway, back together okay. again. Here we go. Don't don't bring up Hugh Jackman to me. I'll go on a tangent about him. <laughs> um, I don't believe I brought him up, but yeah, go on. No, but you you implied Hugh Jackman. Greatest show on earth. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Greatest showman. Greatest show on earth. Yeah. Um, where I want to begin today is transparency in the way your clients see you has become a very big deal for very large businesses. Uh, larger businesses are being kind of called upon to uh, show more transparency because consumers are now becoming a little bit more aware that they themselves want to be aware of what goes on within the companies that they support. Mm -hmm. um, some companies have been called are being are being very open and honest about how uh, people get sal or how people how people's salaries are made um basically what's going into their products um from a variety of different things mm -hmm. transparency nonetheless has become very popular and very important with very large industries mm -hmm. now with smaller businesses transparency is almost a choice because obviously when you're a smaller business you don't have hundreds of thousands of people knocking on your door being like how are you making my running shoes like where do you sure. make where do you get the material for my coat corporate social responsibility exactly so when you're a smaller business you don't have that level of responsibility to be transparent to everybody. Sure. But it is a conscious decision and one that you made yourself. So I wanted to ask, why was it so important for you to um, have that level of transparency with your clients, even if, you know, you don't have 100,000 people knocking down your door? Uh, personally, I like it. Uh, I like working with people that are super transparent. I mm -hmm. like looking at a contract uh, for instance, if, when you when I buy a car, uh, and everybody, I'm sure everybody hates buying a car, uh, going through the all the paperwork and trying to figure out uh, how much money is this cost me, how much money is that cost me. I don't want to just see the final sticker price. I want to see each item because I want to know what I'm getting. Mm. And most companies that are very proud of what they're giving actually lay out every single item. So on a real estate side of things, I'm the person that would rather show everything that we're doing so that people can make a true decision and actually compare apples to, we'll call it apples. Uh, most people don't show their entire business plan, let alone the process, uh, everything they do behind the scenes. And realistically, you're going to stand out. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, there's definitely a, uh, an advantage to us doing so. Yeah. 
Uh, in addition to me actually wanting to do it, the benefit is the fact that people want it as well. Yeah. So it is an advantage to our business. And I feel that uh, I would do it no other way. Yeah, because I, I, again, like it is a conscious choice that you make. And I think it's one that's a very proactive one. Uh, being able to say, you know, I'm starting out or whatever with my business. I want to be, I want to be transparent. Even if, right. again, I don't have 100,000 people knocking down my door. Even if I have one. Yeah. I want to be transparent to that one person. Even that person is like your mom. It's like, I want to be transparent to my mom. If, you know, if she was for getting the same service, I want to make sure she's getting the full honest truth of it. It's funny how those two things came to mind when you started this conversation. Your mom? Uh, no. Nope. <laughs> uh, maybe. <laughs> Subconsciously. <laughs> the first thing was, hey mom. Uh, <laughs> the first thing was McCain food. Okay. So do you remember when they had that Listeria breakout where their food was pulled from the shelves and McCain uh it probably could have tanked the entire company yeah but uh, they were able to hit it quickly and come out and be honest about the product and tell everybody what was going on and it was actually the president the ceo that did it mm. and before you know it their company's flourished since yeah so transparency killed that yeah if they weren't transparent about it they never would have had a chance yeah uh, in that kind of a situation Secondly, uh, I think of like this Me Too movement that's mm. been going on for a long time now. And well, not really that long, but long enough that it's made a huge impact. Yeah. Uh, now being a father of a girl, I believe that transparency matters. I see absolutely no difference when it comes to uh, my daughter going to apply for another job that perhaps a man is applying for and not being able to see what the how people are getting hired uh what the reasons were that they didn't get hired yeah. perhaps even the job the equality in it mm. i want to know this so i'm a huge proponent of like the me too movement to make sure that uh everybody is created completely equal yeah forget like the fact that it's men women uh look at race and uh country ethnicity you language everything put it all aside and make sure that everybody's treated the exact same way. Realistically, transparency. Yeah. And I mean, the Me Too movement is a fantastic example because, you know, Hollywood and producers and directors or whatever, they were called out about it. And now you see everywhere in the media, it's like, um, I mean, I think it was Jennifer, uh, oh no, Jessica Chastain. Right. Her and Octavia Spencer are doing a movie together and they demanded that they be paid equal. Oh. Um, Michelle Williams uh, just won an Emmy for Fosse Vernon with Sam Rockwell and she demanded equal pay to Sam Rockwell. So, and the marketplace, there is some places, I'm sure there are certain actors that demand more money because yeah. they actually are. Uh, but if there's two lead roles and both are equally as famous or equally as skilled, Talented. whatever the case may be, sure, Yeah. same. But again, nonetheless, transparency in the workplace speaks volume because, you know, in the example of movies, you might be more inclined to go see a movie knowing that, you know, your favorite actress is, she's right up there with the other two guys. Right. You know, she's got the same same card and everything. Yeah. So it's important. Um, but yeah, that's one of the reasons why I wanted us to talk about that because scaling is important too. But yeah. having the conscious decision to, I want to be transparent right out of the gate. It's a really yeah. great idea. Starts in the household. Mm. Uh, with my family, uh, we're super open, honest. Uh, make sure that everybody is aware. Whenever there's someone's feelings that are hurt, it's kind of like just disclose it. Yeah. People can know what was up. Uh, I feel like it works. If it works in the home, works in the workplace, yeah. works everywhere. Uh, it just comes down to the fact that we don't walk around in silos. We all are a team. We all work together. Uh, whether it's clients, uh, employees, uh, family, children, yeah. parents, you name it everybody gets to work together. Exactly. So going back to clients, why is it so important to be transparent with your clients? And I'm not just saying being honest with your clients. I mean, actually being transparent with your clients. Uh, why? Uh, I feel that it's valuable. Mm -hmm. I feel that uh, the client deserves to know. I feel that no one else is doing it. Okay. Uh, I think that being as open and honest as possible and what is sometimes the largest decision that they ever make in their lives is exactly when people want to have honesty so it's it's beyond honesty like transparency is past honesty to the point that when someone says hey uh, i'm going to be honest with you it's kind of like well, what were you before yeah uh, transparency is a mindset that you're constantly just telling the truth mm -hmm. uh, there was a movie that i watched the other day 
and uh, actually we both watched it, mm -hmm. uh, that movie yesterday that was uh, kind of based on the Beatles and whatnot. And John Lennon in the movie turned around and said... Spoiler uh, alert. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, he turned around and said at the very end, uh, talk to people in their eyes and just tell them the truth. Mm -hmm. uh, and then he said, love somebody. Those are the two things that he said were really yeah. important. But talking to somebody and telling them the truth, it seems uh, for people that are super transparent, a no-brainer. Yeah. It's kind of like, what is the other way? Yeah. So... That's, I see no other way to do business. No. Look in someone's eyes and tell them the truth. That's yeah. an excellent quote. Good job, John Lennon, in yeah. the movie yesterday. Yes. <laughs> um, the dead John Lennon. Part of the movie that I didn't really get. It was a bit weird, but it was fictitious, uh, fictitious yet probably true. Hmm. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, so before the, this podcast turns into a movie podcast, which is fine, <laughs> but... Um, I think also it goes back to what I said in the last week's episode was about trust and transparency. They go hand in hand. And without trust, you don't have transparency. Without transparency, you don't have trust. Sure. So I feel like clients will trust you more if you are transparent with them, if you are providing them information that, again, maybe sure. they don't ask for, but Let's, they're like, it's nice to know it's there. Not to contradict, because mm -hmm. I'm just clarifying. Uh, trust comes with transparency, mm -hmm. in my opinion. Transparency has to come first. Okay. I think that trust is a result of transparency. Mm. I don't think you can trust without it. Okay. I think you have to have transparency, then trust goes up. Mm. Uh, you can't trust and then bring along transparency. It's backwards. The transparency had to have existed to ha uh, had to exist to have a trustworthy relationship. Uh, sorry. No, fair Why enough. Not? That makes sense. I'm I, I can agree with this. Yeah. Okay. Um. Okay. So, three ways that knowledge broker is transparent with your clients. Just name three. Uh, we show our entire process from beginning to end yep. uh, for every single client. Mm -hmm. uh, we show exactly the breakdown of our fees and how they work in regards to what people are paying and how they're going to, wh where the money goes. Mm. Uh, we also are transparent about the offer. As much as you think about uh, what's going on, uh, I'll make, sh I'll even put speaker phones in front of me while I'm talking to uh, corresponding clients yeah. uh, or sorry, agents to make mm -hmm. sure that they're aware of what's going on. Yeah. And it's, there's, I, I feel that I'm very much the conduit, uh, but I make sure that they're firmly aware of what's going on with their home. Mm. Uh, I want, it's not like you ever gone to, uh, we come back to this car dealership idea. I'll, I'll work with the car dealer and then all of a sudden uh, the person that I'm working with, the sales associate, They'll leave the room and go to another room and ask the manager or something. Probably, can we reduce the price to this? And then they come back and they talk to you. And it's kind of like, why couldn't I talk to the manager? And why can't the manager just come in yeah. here? Yeah. So I feel like it's they take that part out of it. Uh, and if the manager's in there talking to me, my trust level goes through the roof. It's kind of like, oh, I got to talk to the person. I got to hear what was going on. And this yeah, goes, I'm in. And this goes right back to what we talked about in the last episode within the workplace. Having that... that uh, system where it's like you have to go to someone else and ask them that and go back and then tell the client that it yeah. it creates it creates a chain and it might be an unhealthy chain because now it's teetering what your what your thing is you're like yeah well maybe i don't want this dodge grand caravan because you had to go and talk to your manager without me present and you now said it yeah it's great it's, it's the insecurities yeah th exactly you sit there and it's kind of like well let me go talk to my boss and talk to their boss then i'll come back to you with yeah. their decision and their decision and i gotta call my mom and ask her what she sure. thinks about this and what makes you feel good about that nothing nothing yeah. Because you're like, why don't I talk to your mom? I'll tell her to talk to your mom and make make sure it's okay sure. with her. Yeah, absolutely. Exactly. Um, so then on that then, because this kind of ties into what I want to talk about next, just a couple tips to how to implement some more transparency into what your clients see. Okay. Um, the first is you mentioned it, that we talk about, we talk money. You know, okay. we talk about prices and all that kind of stuff. My biggest pet peeve and all you people listening out there i swear if you're one of these people i'm on to you my biggest pet peeve is that people don't put their prices online for things uh, now in some cases you can't because like i mean real estate we can't we put sure. the prices of the house on but every sale's different yep i especially gym memberships these are the ones that are these are my go-to when gyms don't put online what their gym membership costs are it literally kills me why don't they because, and I'll tell you why, they don't put them on there because a lot of the times the people that don't are the ones that have higher prices. Mm -hmm. So they assume that when someone sees a higher price, they are only looking at the price. They're not looking at the value behind it. So they're okay. looking at it and they get scared. This is their, their, their thinking about it, that they get scared. In my opinion, and in my experience, because I worked for a gym that had this kind of model, right. 
it scares people more if you are trying to dodge that question. I was trained to pick up the phone and they go, hey, so I was looking online and your gym program seems really great, but I just need to know what the monthly costs are. I would have to be, I'd have to go, I'm sorry, but I actually can't tell you that information on the phone. Why don't you come in and try a free class? It's interesting. People I, get scared of that. People, sure they do. that's a fear thing because yeah. now you're telling people, why don't you come to me and I'll tell you, yeah. why don't you come? Why don't we plan a meeting? Why can't, it's like, all of a sudden that trust and that barrier goes right back up because you're like, how can I trust these people if you're not even going to tell me what, you know, your ranges are? Sure. It's like, why would I want to go do something if I know it's completely logistically impossible? Sure. I mean, even if you gave it a simple solution like uh, uh, our monthly fee is forty nine ninety nine a month. However, we do have different discounts and different things and different packages, yeah. et cetera. So, I mean, that gives you an idea, but please come in. I can understand that some yeah. people don't want to give full information because uh, it, I don't actually, I don't understand it completely. The The gyms, I feel like they often don't give out the information because uh, there's everybody in that entire gym, they're all of them are paying different rates. Mm. They don't want people to know what other people are paying because they're all going to come to the desk and say, I want that rate. So it's, uh, it's not necessarily a great business model, but I guarantee that there's a lot of people doing it out of secrecy. Yeah. Uh, if everybody knew that the rate was uh, was forty nine ninety nine a month, and everybody paid that, uh, there might be the odd time that they do some kind of an incentive where people are long term members and they give them a bit of a discount. Sure, that's great, but I mean, realistically, the information should be there for everybody to see. Yeah. It's not like you go to a McDonald's and it's like, well, how much is the burger today? <laughs> exactly. Right. Well, why don't you order and see? Yeah. No. Come in and I'll show you. Exactly. See, that's the kind of logic that I can't get behind. Like, could you imagine if you're thinking even like something like Spotify or something? If Spotify was like, here, try it one month free. And then at the end of the month, they're like, surprise. Sure. Now it's going to cost you $30 a month. Why would anyone want that? No one would want that service because you're like, you're basically tricking me into something. And that's the thing. Your your clients can see through you. And this leads to my second point. Be very genuine when you are being, when you're trying to be transparent. Mm -hmm. People can smell a rat a mile away. (laughs) They can sense, no matter how much fake smiling you do, no matter how high your voice gets, people will be able to tell if you're being genuine or not. Mm -hmm. You actually brought this up last week and that's what made me think about it when um, we were talking about sales and sales voices. You had, you were talking to someone who had kind of a sales voice. Right. People can hear these now. People know these everyone has a sales voice (laughs) you can't tell me you get on a phone with a client and your sales voice doesn't go on it does yeah but but there's a genuine sales voice and there's a non-genuine sales voice and the ones that aren't you can tell right away they're the ones that are like hi it's so nice to meet you welcome blah 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 yeah the other ones are like mine I think I have a pretty good sales voice because I say the exact same octave I usually am. Right. I get excited if I'm excited about the product I'm selling. But if I'm not excited about the product, I'm not going to like say like, wow, oh my God, you're going to love this product. This product's the best product in the world. Like, no, I'm going to be genuine with you. Say, hey, you can't afford a $300 pair of leggings or whatever. I'm not going to point you to the $300 pair of leggings. Agreed. So genuine, being genuine with any... Yeah, with any transaction is so important because people can, they will know. And that's the fun thing that you have to give your clients and your customers a little bit more credit these yeah. days. People know. Yeah, yeah. We've been trained. We've been trained to trust or not trust. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, that, that could be a good thing or a bad thing. But for the most part, it's making people more aware. Again, this goes back to why big companies are being asked to be more transparent because people genuinely want like honest interactions with people. Yeah. And they want honest interactions with your business. I understand completely. Mm. I can't I can't disagree with anything you said. Perfect. I'm so happy. Job <laughs> well done today. Um, the other one I want to talk about is addressing concerns. So I know in the past, I have seen this done many times where if say something doesn't work, you know, for example, say if like one of our microphones broke, I'd call the company and I'd say, hey, one of our microphones broke. The thing doesn't work. Some companies will go, ah. I don't know what I can do. I'm like, you're going to have to give me a minute. Okay, is that going to actually end up costing you $300 because your microphone broke and blah, blah, blah. Sure. And then you're like, but I just got it. Like, you're not addressing my concern, which is my microphone doesn't work and I just bought it. Right. 
some companies will literally go we had that happen by the way we literally and this, and was yes wicked. they were so good and so was the company so we use Aston microphones and i actually emailed the guy in england being like hey my microphone thing broke blah blah blah. what can i do to fix it or like yeah. how can i help he responded back within like six hours saying oh this is how, where you go this is what you do this is what you do and it's like that is like amazing thank you so much for doing that <laughs> he didn't put like I, there was no phone like phone where i'm sitting on hold for like 45 minutes trying to get a hold of someone like email that guy he emailed me back because obviously time changed that's why it took sure. six hours um and then i called long and mcquade and they were like yeah just bring around whenever you can it's like oh my gosh like yeah. addressing all my concerns like my fear is gone i'm like and yep. again you're trusting so much more now because you've ad you've addressed the concerns yeah exactly so address your people's concerns like if someone's not happy about something just say hey let's yeah, talk about it and that wouldn't happen unless you had an open transparent situation yeah you have to have the open transparent situation for people to actually be able to speak up feel safe that they can say their concerns mm -hmm. uh state their fears uh, and then ultimately it's our job to remove them mm -hmm. uh, take down the barriers and make sure that they feel comfortable and then they're going to return yeah and they're going to send you customers and send you clients all the time oh my gosh yes and that's the thing referrals are huge yeah. so you know if you you can build those good relationships with your clients and they're going to pass on that good word to everybody else yeah no doubt yeah and so this leads me into my next one which is maintaining communication okay whether it's email whether it's phone whether it's texting whether it's through social media being able to maintain a communication with your clients on maybe not a daily basis, but at least a weekly, monthly, yearly. Right. Um, something that you could do as easy as uh, sending emails with information that might be important to them. Email them uh, events that you're hosting like we do. Yep. Uh, send them a phone call after the sale and ask them how everything's going. Uh, posting things on social media, just willy nilly. Yep. Texting them when there's a 10% off sale on your online store. These are just some very simple ways that you can maintain communication with your consumers, with your clients, everyone in your your inner circle so that they feel like they're still part of it with you. It's funny. We probably do a lot more transparency than I even thought. <laughs> See? Yeah. Yeah. I did too. Because I was when I was doing all my typey types this morning, I yeah. was like, wow, this is... It's a sneak peek inside the life all the time. It is, but it's in ways that like are so subconscious that you don't even realize. Like by just sending someone a, an email to an event, it's like, oh, they thought of me. Right. Right. Like they're, they're, they want me to be yes. a part of this. They're yeah. joining me. And it's yeah. like, wow, that's we really We call it cool. like an ecosystem here. Yeah. Where everybody feels like they're a part of the ecosystem. Mm -hmm. Once they're in the ecosystem, they can't get out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, no. And I, I mean, some people find emails annoying and usually it's because they're signed up to emails that they don't want, right? Perhaps, or there's no value in them. Yeah, or there's I no mean, value, if, exactly. Uh, if someone sent me an email that I didn't necessarily subscribe to, but it's something that I really value and I really like, I don't go, oh, they sent me something I didn't ask for. It's kind of like, oh, that's kind of neat. But mm -hmm. as long as it's value. Yeah. Like if things aren't of value, it's garbage. We get a lot of garbage, but if it's not, if it's a value, then people appreciate it. Yeah, well, there you go. So yeah. go, going back to content is king. Make yes. sure your content is good. Um, and then the last one that I asked, is ask for feedback, don't beg for it. So okay. we talked about this last time with um, how to create a more transparent environment with your uh, client or your colleagues. Yeah. This time it's also very vital for with your with your customers or your clients um, asking for feedback. But I want to be very clear that I'm you're asking for it. You're not begging for it. Yeah, I'm. I, I would do a precursor before, so mm. make sure that when we meet with clients. I let them know beforehand that I'm going to follow up with them after yeah. and get their feedback. Yeah. So I plant the seed early that I want their feedback, which usually makes them think during the process, during the entire process. So when it comes to feedback time, it's easy because they've already done the thinking. Yeah. You don't hit them up at the end and go, and how was this? And how was that? And how was this? I say, I'm going to ask you how these things are. Pay close attention to them if you can mm -hmm. for me, which helps you. Mm -hmm. And ultimately... Uh, you're going to have a full open mic to tell me everything that you thought. Yeah. And then people go, oh, okay. Then their brain starts working. Yes. So it creates this open flow of communication, transparency. Genius. I love it. <laughs> that one is like my favorite thing ever because it's so true. Like you plant the seed early, then for the rest of the experience, they're kind of thinking, oh, like, yes. well, maybe he could, you know, improve on that. Or, oh, that was really great that he did that. Yep. And then you're right. At the end, they're not just like, um, 
that was uh that was great thank you also the transparency in the middle of it if there's something going on in the middle of a transaction that they don't like yeah i encourage them to speak up they feel safe to talk to you about it exactly and oh. then they don't hang on to the very end when all of a sudden they have resentment yeah because i feel like resentment is just held back held back feelings it's so true oh my god i am so happy right now <laughs> i'm as happy as a clam right now because it is so true because at the end of it like asking someone for your feedback or something like that they're going to look at what the last five minutes or the last six minutes were they're not going to look at the entire process and when you beg for it which by beg i mean um and i've seen this i actually i mean i did this one time but it said give us a five-star rating and we'll give you a free pretzel oh yeah and i was and these are like the nice soft pretzels and i was kind of (laughs) like i could go for a pretzel so i gave them a five star so i could get a pretzel but the point being the first time i saw that i was like that's shady that is shady yeah. because they're now bribing you into giving to give. They're like, I'll give you a free pretzel that usually costs nine dollars if you can give me free five stars. Sure, I could I could see like in the, in a company that does that, they're really not using any of the feedback. No, the person that's writing the five genuine. star review is just writing something quickly to get this mm-hmm. whatever forty five minimum character thing. Uh, in the end of the day, it's hurting the business yeah. because they're not learning anything from their clients. Absolutely nothing. And again, I've even worked for a company that was like that. And I remember seeing all the reviews and they were all carbon copies of the one that came before oh, yeah. because our company was begging for the reviews. Yeah. They weren't asking them. They weren't genuine. They weren't um, anything that was actually concrete that if you saw that you were like, wow, this place it's is really smart, good. Though, eh? Just to go down there and copy someone else's comment and rewrite it. I mean, I've done it. <laughs> Because I can't it's say like, that I have now. I'm going to have to if I ever want a free pretzel. Well, fine. So that's what I did to get my free pretzel. Fair I, enough. But I did not like who I was to get my free pretzel. Let's, no. I'll just say that. Like I, I, when, I went to, when I went away and I went on some really good cruise lines or whatever, like the boats and stuff, sure. they would send you a follow-up email saying like, Hey, Trish, I hope you enjoyed your thing on Go Discovery. Um, if there's anything that was up or whatever, please give us our feedback yeah. or you can, you can leave a review. And I, and this was like immediately after I got off that boat. So I'm like looking at my phone and all of a sudden I've got this thing and it's like, yeah, that was a good boat ride. I'll leave a review. And then they get my review because it's actually genuine. They sent me the email. At the time, live. Mm, Yeah. Timing. Yes. Yeah. And again, this is like your ticket because they're so smart, right? They thought about, okay, your ticket says you're going at 11. Sure. You'll be back for 12. Send it at 12.01. Yeah. Mind you, I've also gone places where like it was supposed to go to 12.01 and something got skipped and it still Mm. came to me. So I feel like I was like, ooh, they lost yeah. one there. Yeah, they did. Well, they probably lost you because the boat was late anyway. Perhaps, but, yes. Uh, but nonetheless, that's kind of, those are some little tips that I think are really helpful mm-hmm. and also things to just be mindful of too because uh, like I said last week, you need to know where to draw the line. So with transparency, again, it's not just about being like, this is my social security number and this is where I live and this is my birthday and all that kind of stuff. It's about giving your clients and your consumers enough that they can enjoy the product, that they love the product, that they'll keep coming back to the product and that they would share it with their friends and family. Sure. Most people that are loyal to a product or a service will almost always give you feedback because they care and they want you to do better because it helps them out too. Mm -hmm. It's so true. I mean, I don't give so much feedback online, but when I do, it's because it's typically something I really like. Sure. No different than a restaurant. I go to good restaurants and if all of a sudden I see something uh, falling off, I'll mm. make a comment and then uh, there's almost always a reason. I found out the other day that they there's a restaurant that I used to go, I go to quite frequently and they hired a new cook uh, and the cook was not pre- prepping it the same way that the previous cook was because they're growing. Mm. Uh, the, the previous cook still works there, but they're trying to delegate. And then people were like, hey, the lasagna is not the same. What happened? Yeah. And they're like, damn. So they went back and they actually had to like, do it the old-fashioned way mm. because it changed the way that the people were tasting. It changed the, uh, the experience, which ultimately could take away from the entire process. You lose customers. Mm-hmm. But I wanted to keep them. I wanted to go eat this, eat at this place all the time, uh, which I still enjoy. So I spoke up. And when mm-hmm. you speak up, you get. All right. Well, on that delicious note, um, we're going to pause our podcast today or stop our podcast. All right. Yeah. That's it. That's it. All right. This is the end of part two, though. This is the end of part two. There's no part three. Okay. But I think this, uh, yeah, this transparency talk is always really enlightening, I find. So uh, I'm glad we talked about it. Yeah. And to make transparency open, 
I would like to hear, and so would Trish, would like to hear what you guys think of our podcast. Mm -hmm. uh, we want to get some feedback from you. So this is the opportunity. We're setting it up. Whether you leave it now or if we preempt you to leave it in three or four episodes, start thinking about how you can give us feedback so that we can make this even better for you, our audience. Yeah, good good plug there, Josh. <laughs> well done. Um, but yeah, so definitely, like Josh said, give us your comments. We'd love to hear from you guys. And uh, yeah, we hope you have a great week and we'll see you here next Tuesday. Okay, all the best from us. Bye. Take care. Thank you very much for stopping by our channel. If you have any questions or if you're looking to buy or sell, go to our website and contact us today. Knowledge is power and creates experts in understanding. If you want power, hit thumbs up on this video and subscribe to our channel so you can get weekly videos from me, your knowledge